Socio devlog time. We are now up to version 1.7.1. Exciting times. Let's do things a little bit differently this time. I'm mostly just going to browse through the GitHub repo commit history here. And there are some more practical things I can demonstrate as well. So firstly, on the client side, the prop update callback can now actually give you the diff of the value instead of the actual value itself. So you get both. So you know what the factual value is currently and what the changes were from the last update. Uh, so yeah, some uh, useful getters here, like the address information. So the IP, uh, the current running port, um, IP version, stuff like that. And then you can actually get the WebSocket server itself if you want it, but that's kind of dangerous. Don't do that. Uh, but it's there if you know what you're doing. Uh, this one I'm not actually too sure about, but I think you can now import the socio files without the slash dist in the middle there. So like, uh, I mean, stuff like this. I think you can write it without the dist now, but I'm not too sure if that works because I, I think it worked uh, in some cases and didn't work in other cases, but... Um, you can try that. So there was some issue with the magic string being a dev dependency instead of a regular dependency when I was building a next project. Uh, so now I changed that and it works, but I don't know, I don't remember what exactly the issue was or why it was an issue, because I think it should technically be a dev dependency because it's only used by like build tools like Vite. I renamed the core.ts file to core-server.ts to make more sense and it's more consistent with the other files because we have core client and core session and whatever. So yeah, fix your imports. Here's an actual feature. You can now register props from the client side instead of only doing it from the server side. Ignore all this other stuff, but it's just this one line here. Uh, you can register a prop from the client side and give it a name. You can also choose to not give it a name, give it a literal null, and the server will generate a random name for you. And then you can grab that here uh, and do all the stuff you would normally do with props. Uh, so just subscribe to it, unsubscribe, all that good stuff. Uh, this is useful mostly for creating game rooms or session rooms for a lim limited amount of people. So you get the code, um, the client can generate the code on the client side and then share that code with others. And so you don't need to pre-generate rooms on the server side. So with this example, the server would generate a UUID by default, but there's actually a hook a server side hook gen prop name uh, that you can hook into to generate your own names by whatever logic you want. It'll just do that instead of the UUID. Uh, and you'll also notice here uh, this flag observationally temporary. What does that mean? Uh, it is this flag that you can set here manually as well. Uh, but for client side register props, it's always set to true by default and you can't turn that off. Uh, but if you're registering on a server, you can actually set it if you want it. Essentially, this means that this prop, whatever it is, will be unregistered from the server when there's nobody observing it or there's nobody subscribed to it. It'll just get deleted. So client side registered props are all temporary. If there are no subscribers, this prop will vanish from the server to not take up space. This is also kind of like a security feature to make sure that clients can't spam. You can now do a max payload size restriction on the server sending information out. So the server won't actually send out or propagate information through the WebSocket if it detects that the payload size uh, of the string you want to send is actually larger than this uh, for that session or globally. And the payload size actually refers to the character count of the string that's going to be sent out after being stringified and all this and all that. I also migrated from JSON to YAML uh, for the serialization over the network uh, because YAML is actually quite a bit more efficient uh, in terms of character count. And that's very important here because I'm sending everything as a string. So it's roughly 30% more efficient and I can actually demonstrate that. Uh, it sent out this data as a string and normally this would have been JSON, but now it's YAML, so it's just indentation based. You'll notice that there are quite a few less characters. For example, all the quote marks are gone and the braces are all gone because they're not necessary. And so getting rid of all these extra symbols is actually quite a bit more efficient, network efficient. Uh, also, you'll notice that the kinds are now enumerated. I don't know if I mentioned that in the last video. Uh, so that's also a little bit more network efficient because now it's not a string of a bunch of characters. It's just one character. Uh, this makes it less readable in this network panel here, but in the console, it still resolves that number to the actual enumerated uh, string. Also, if we pronounce this as JSON or JSON, then I think YAML should be pronounced as YAML or Jamal. Uh, this was just some TypeScript stuff so that the developers using Socio get less errors. More TypeScript stuff. So now there's a, like a basic client response promise um, that most queries return so that in TypeScript you have better typing. Uh, here's some documentation on the SSL, how to set up 
a secure WebSocket. So my custom logger uses colors in the console, for example, here in these messages in um, PowerShell, or these messages here in the dev console on Chrome. Uh, but on Firefox, those colors don't actually work and they print out as regular characters and it looks confusing. So on Firefox by default, this color formatting is not included in the string when this is printed out to the console. But you can override that if you want to. Here's another optimization or feature. Uh, I no longer use Base64 library to encode files being sent over WebSockets. Instead, now I use the Paco library for that, which does pretty much the same thing, but it has an added benefit of being quite a bit faster. And it also does file compression. So the file gets compressed on server side and then decompressed on the client side and vice versa. So now file transfer is quite a bit faster and more network efficient all in one. Pretty cool. Um, so send to clients function is now promise based, so you can await it. And then this function here, so the session.send or client.send, which is the function that the server uses to actually send information to the clients. Uh, it used to be completely synchronous because the WebSocket library that I'm using, its send function is completely synchronous. So instead I use uh, a Node.js trick here uh, with the set immediate uh, to convert the synchronous code into asynchronous code. And I did actually a bunch of benchmarks on this and I found that this code is way faster if you don't await the promises that this returns, uh, which of course makes sense. Uh, however, if you do await every one of these, then the code is slightly slower. So why does this matter in the first place? Well, because this send function is spammed in a bunch of different places in the framework uh, many, many times. And a lot of times you might not actually care about waiting for this send to go out and you just want to carry on doing other stuff, other logic on the server side. So this lets you just queue it up in the background, it'll send out whenever it sends out and you can do other stuff. So that means most of the time when this gets called, it's actually faster in the framework and when you use it as well. Uh, there was a bug with the prop val, if it was an actual literal false C value, for example, zero or uh, false or null, uh, then Socio would do the wrong thing here. And so I fixed that. Um, and that's about it for all the major updates to Socio since the last version. Sometime in the future, I will remake the introductory and getting started videos because now they're quite a bit outdated. Also, if anybody's interested, I would much appreciate it if you could provide some default starter templates in various different web frameworks using Socio to make it easier for other people to get started on their projects with whatever tech stack they're familiar with uh, by using Socio as well. And if you do that, I'll include a link to your repository on the Socio repo here. And tune in next time where I build support for Socio and WebSockets on a quantum computer.